In a sequence diagram, like the one you see here, you don't necessarily have to number the messages to show the order in which they occur. You can number them if you want to, and some UML tools do that automatically, but because in a sequence diagram we have the vertical axis representing time, earlier at the top of the screen and then later as you move down the screen, it's clear that a message that's higher up on the screen is going to be earlier than one that's a little lower down. So in this example, get grades is higher than get security clearance, so we know that get grades happens first. You don't need to number this one number one and this one number two, and so on. On a communication diagram, however, that's not necessarily the case. Messages that are higher up on the screen do not necessarily come earlier than messages that are lower down. So in communication diagrams, you do number the messages to show the order in which they occur. And you saw this in the previous movie. But how do communication diagrams deal with nested messages? In other words, how do they show that a message causes another message to be sent? In this example of the sequence diagram, the get grades message invokes the get security clearance message. So these messages are nested. And here's how you would show that in a communication diagram. You do it with the numbering. Get grades causes the registrar system to send the message get security clearance. So instead of numbering this number one and this number two to show that this is a nested message, we use number one for the initial message and then number 1.1 .1 for the message that's nested within it. And if there were further messages being invoked, we would continue that numbering system, 1.2, 1.3, and so on. So just to get a look at that, here we have four different objects, and we have associations already drawn between the objects that can communicate with each other. So you see the object one, can only interact with object 2, and these three objects, 2, 3, and 4, can all interact with each other. So if object 1 sends a message to object 2, we'll just call it message A for this example, that would be message number 1. And if that message invokes a message from object 2 to object 3, We'll call that one message B. You see here we have that numbering that shows that this is a nested message, 1.1. And if that causes object 3 to send a message to object 4, you see how the numbering system continues. So messages 1.1 and 1.2 are both nested within message 1. That's great for when you've got one set of nested messages, so how do you deal with it if you want to show messages that aren't nested within that sort of hierarchy? Let's see, we're up to message D, and we're going to start a new group here. So this will start off with message 2. You see we have the number 2 here, message D is message number 2, so that it's separate from message 1 and the messages that are nested within message 1. And so if message 2, message D, causes object 2 to send a message to object 4, then we would continue the same numbering system. And so you see how this becomes clear, the sequence of messages through the numbering rather than through the different placement from top to bottom on the screen. So in a communication diagram, you have to be aware of and follow the numbering to get a sense of the ordering of the interactions and of the messages that get sent from one participant to another.